with that, I wanted to introduce uh, Eric Gebhardt, who is Chief Platforms Officer with GE, a very notable company um, that has made some interesting announcements lately, and I'll leave it to him to explain all of that. He's in charge of over 7,000 entrepreneurs. They're currently sitting in some sort of open meeting space, uh, you know, in the seaport, uh, and he's learning about um, how it is to basically become a startup again, I guess. Welcome. Okay. Great. Well, it's great to be here today. It's great to be in Boston, and it's great to be with, uh, with M MIT today. And uh, you know, GE is a, a large company, but we're always reinventing ourselves. And the transition we're going through right now is to become the first digital industrial company. We have a long history of being an industrial company, but now we're working more and more to become uh, uh, digital with this. And we're also trying to act internally much more like an entrepreneurial company and much more like a startup internally. And as part of this, we've built up a large software organization to start being more and more digital in that. And we're also moving our headquarters from Fairfield, Connecticut to here in Boston. And, and this is the reason why. We want to be closer to the entrepreneurs in Boston. We want to be closer to the academics that are, are in Boston to help us really kickstart our digital industrial transition and really help us be more entrepreneurial. And this is a great example of how we're doing this uh, here. And we're really excited about it. I'm with a part of the business that we're calling an internal startup within GE. We're splitting out some of our exponential technologies that are in the energy space. So our solar, our LEDs, our battery energy storage, our EV charging, and our on-site power. And splitting that out. and really to get after the fact that this is going to, these, these technologies are, are exponentially developing, so capabilities going up, costs going down, and we need to move faster in this, this kind of space. We're also looking at combining this with our cloud technologies and our platform technologies around the software so we can tie all these together. And then also looking at novel business models. How do we use our balance sheet? How do we use different financial models to move from an OPEX point of view to a CAPEX, or from a CAPEX point of view to an OPEX point of view so that customers can be incentivized to do this and really try to activate the market around distributed energy resources. And so we've carved out these businesses. We've moved them into a different organization. And now we're trying to really get after how do we exponentially grow this area here? How do we pull technologies from other parts outside of GE? How do we pull from inside of GE to really grow this part of the business? And I think this is where MIT, this is where the Boston ecosystem can really help us with some of the things we're working on uh, in this area. There's really three things we're trying to work on in this space. We're trying to reduce the costs both to the end customers, the, the, the consumers of the electricity, but also to the utilities. Because of the complexities around this, as there's more distributed energy resources, it makes the utilities uh, life more complicated there. How do we kind of get in between that and try to reduce the costs around this? We want to be able to produce on site, and, and then we want to be able to shift. We would reduce through LEDs and other technologies around optimization. We would produce through our solar and other on-site power there, and then a shifting through battery energy storage uh, and, and be able to shift the capacity around in that space. And what's exciting is that a lot of these types of things, there are startups being formed within MIT, uh, and there's a lot of technology that are uh, around this space right now. <clears throat> and then the last thing we're working on is around the software and trying to make sure that we have the right analytics, the right software, uh, the right ways to approach this, even at the controls layer to make sure that we can do this because the complexity goes up dramatically. Going from 10,000 power plants today in the U.S. to hundreds of millions of nodes when we really start doing distributed energy resources across here. So a lot of complexity in this space. And one of the exciting parts about this is that we're not trying to solve this all ourselves. We know that there are a lot of people that are smart within our company, but also a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of startup companies that are out there that can help with this. So when we look at this, we do partnerships with a lot of uh, companies 
to try to work with them to figure out how do we fill in some of the gaps we have in our technologies. We also go and have platforms that we're working to have startups build upon to tie themselves into. On the software side, we're working uh, or we have launched a platform called Predix. It's really a network fabric, a backbone that can tie a lot of things together. And with this platform, different apps can be built upon that. And so we're starting to build a developer ecosystem around this where various uh, either companies, individuals can start building applications on top of that to build out in this space uh, to help fill out the overall ecosystem. We're also partnering with companies uh, that can fill in some of the areas that we're really looking for uh, around this. In addition, we also have our ventures organization, and Marianne Wu is in the back and she'll be speaking later on a panel where we're working with startups to go ahead and invest, make sure that we're keeping close with a lot of the startups that are happening there. So we kind of work in a bunch of different areas to try to make sure we're filling this out because, uh, you know, having the humility to go in and say that, you know, we need to help build out this, we need some help from the outside to build this out, get that whole ecosystem. And we also do crowdsourcing, which is, uh, which is something that we've been getting better and better at over time, where we put out our data, we put out our challenges out there, and get as much feedback as we can about the applications. So we had an interesting crowdsourcing one around our LED environment. We look at the LEDs as the next physical to digital interface, whether it's communication uh, going through Li-Fi, whether it's using it as an endpoint to bring data back from, we're not sure of all the best ways, what data sources, what sensors we should have, those kinds of discussions. And so we had some crowdsourcing around what are the best ways to do it. If we went ahead and put six sensors on, on uh, LED fixtures, what would they be? What would you do with it? Got a lot of great feedback on that. And so we're trying to reach out into the environment. I think the, the uh, environment, the ecosystem around Boston is gonna be a great place for us to really collaborate. The buildings that we'll be uh, uh, having for our headquarters are going to be much more collaborative in nature, so it'll be an opportunity for us to work together around that. Uh, and for, for current, it's going to be vital to our success to really work with the ecosystem as we go forward. So I'm, exciting to work, I'm excited to work closer and closer with MIT, work closer and closer with Boston going forward. So thank you very much, Sean.